you convince some dumb schmuck to pay him to watch other people play video games? Like, he's not even playing. <laughs> he's watching other people play. And making more than I make for it. It's fucking amazing. Congratulations, my friend. Congratulations. Way to go. I've actually never thought about it in those shirts. got back, um, where did I get back from? LA, just like two days ago before before you guys stopped in, so like all the clothes are still unpacked and this is a perpetual level of uh, half packed, half unpacked, I think they're still closing. It's like the notepad I have where like just any content ideas, I just write them down so I don't forget. Previous research I've done, actually I think most of this is uh, for actually Toronto that I'm leaving for tomorrow. Stats, these are storylines and these are um, just like, you know, it's all spread out, nothing's ever complete until, uh, until you sit down and end it, but yeah, this is, uh, this is where I come home to. Five thirty a.m. flight, it's just ungodly. And then on top of everything, going out the night before. Um, this year, I think I'm on pace to be traveling for um, about 300 of the 365 days in the year. I don't, I don't really know how many flights I've taken, but something like 85 percent, 90 percent of the year, I've been, I've been away from Grand Rapids, away from home. I think, I think my parents are always like uh, going to be of the mind where it's, um, you know, he's obviously worked hard to get where he is. He's obviously done what it takes. I know in their heads they're just like, oh, he's traveling to a new place, he's gonna work another event, some other place in the world. I, I think it's I think it'd be impossible for them to understand how much how much work went into it because they're just not part of the scene. One day he came to us and said, I wanna give this a try as a career. I wanna focus a hundred percent on it. And he said, Because if I don't do it, I'll always wonder. And I, I owe it to myself because it's what I love. We had a good friend who introduced us to the game and it was just like pubs and it was fun and then I th we stumbled upon somehow that uh, NIP vs X3 demo from like 2001 CPL, the double overtime on you. Watched that and thought it, was, thought it was crazy. So Jason was always a couple years ahead of anyone else in his age group because he had an older brother that was in the game. Really Counter-Strike was the first thing that uh, brought us into uh, team arena, competitive arena together. He's the one who snuck out one night to, <laughs> to uh, drive to New York to go to a W2Z tournament without my parents knowing about it. Um, you know, he's the one who did all the crazy shit like that, that, uh, that, that kind of like when he would come back with the stories of being at a CPL, I was like, shit, like, oh man, I wanna, I wanna go to that. That's, that's my next goal is to get to a CPL. I always make our team do like 15 push-ups each like in the bathroom or like by our BYOC computers just so we get like blood pumping through our arms and like shake all the nervousness out and I guess that works. We won. He was actually in a number of uh, invite teams, uh, professional teams I guess you'd call them, far before I was. I think he was like on a second or third by the time he made the decision. He actually stepped down to a lower level to play with me at one point. I, I went to a couple one or two CPLs without Jason, but really where we made our big name uh, was under the uh, United Five name. Uh, him and his brother, uh, uh, Michael, were liter were like legends in the scene. Like they were on United Five. I always thought it was the coolest thing. These two brothers kind of competing at a top level. I was a huge fan of all of them. United Five with Jason and his brother, they were like, at the time they were one of the better tactical teams. And that was like where they really got their the jump on people. CPL winner 2003 was like our big, big thing as a team. My first big placing. Um, it was me and Hare, my brother, uh, the rabbit, not the actual, not the actual head of Hare. Um, Trip, Fraud, and a, and a guy named Slick from New York. That CPL that we went to, our first, my first CPL. I didn't play too great, but uh, Jason was always like the one that was trying to have fun on the team and kind of loose and you know he wanted to do other things and we always forced him to practice and stuff like that but like he was amazing on land like 
he did well on mine, but like for some reason he's had this carefree attitude and just like nothing to lose and he always performed, especially at that CPL, like he was definitely our MVP. Oh, what are you doing? One time to hear him. Got into the CPL and uh, played uh, beating out a, a bunch of really good teams um, uh, and eventually beating the number one team in the USA at the time was Team 3D. We beat them and then ended up the first uh, American team uh, that year. So I went off to college, uh, went in being very, very dedicated to the schoolwork uh, at the start of things. Um, and just the internet in the dorm wasn't good enough, so, so stopped competing uh, in Counter-Strike on any level. And then in 2012, when, when CSGO came out, played the beta, thought it was trash. I think we actually, my brother and me and DeBears and CBZ, who's another big time player, I think we actually came back and like made a puck team to try and just randomly, there was like some random tournament in Chicago that we all went to and got like second place in. He was trying to get back to competitive Counter-Strike. Um, him and like a Warden and them, they had a team. But I do know even while he was living with me, even while playing CS, he would cast here and there and and do analyst work and he always mentioned to me like in passing we just kind of talked about it and he was like very interested in it. You know TM and I didn't really have the greatest relationship as teammates so I came out of practice one day and I was just like listen it's it's me or him I don't care which way you choose but um, if he's if he's on the team I'm not on the team so they, they went with him which is fine and it actually turns out to be a blessing right because uh, right after that I think like the very next day I messaged DSEA and I have you know I've known LPK and I've known Torbel for, for 10 years I was one of like the first instructors they had on the site way back in 2003, 2004, um, and I just said, "Hey, I want to let me let me be a part of some of these broadcasts. Like, let me let me start casting for $15 a night. I think it was. I think that was my starting pay as a commentator. <laughs> was well, 15 bucks, <laughs> just raking it in, just like you know, three hours, 15 bucks. Um, but it was fun, you know. It's Counter Strike. It's been part of my life for so long. I wanted to still stay stay active with Counter Strike somehow. So. Um, and, it, uh, and then that just built into what, what we have now. Jason, how's it going? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Jason was always very good at uh, being a student of the game. I'll give an example. He never played football other than uh, Little League football, but he always understood the concept of the game. He's the type of person that could have been a coach but never played the game. That's, that's exactly it. I mean, Anders and Semler are, are known to be people that built their career by getting to know the community and being good at play-by-play -play and, and, and uh, knowing the players. But in terms of knowing the strategies and knowing how players think, Jason brings that extra aspect. I think what makes Moses unique was, of course, I think he was really one of the first retired players to get into commentary, and so obviously having that background was great. But also, it's just the, the, the chill, kind of laid-back personality that he has. Uh, you know, he can kind of roll with the punches whenever it's a joke, but he can also get really serious whenever it's, you know, time to talk about a really important topic. And it's also just how flexible he is. That's something he was consciously trying to do, right? He didn't want to, you know, kind of pigeonhole himself into just one role and one style. He wanted to be able to be a, a commentator, a talent in the scene. It was Jason and Blue casting, and the, Jason asked, hey, why don't you just cast a game for fun? And at the time, I was like, I've never done any of this before. Um, I have a speech impediment, and so it's like, it's kind of, I was a little nervous, I was, it was pretty intimidating. Since I've known him for a long time, we just hit it off, we had fun, I made stupid jokes, and it just, my, my goal was to embarrass him, alright, like just to make his face red, because you know, he's trying to be all professional, I'm Moses, hey, 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 you know, just being like the, you know, the, like one of the top tier commentators and here's me like wearing a t-shirt and just like, hey guys, how's it going? Maybe the past month or two, very recent, where I felt like my my job isn't in esports. I mean, it is, but I don't, I don't consider like, I'm a content creator, right? And I just happen to work in the esports industry and I happen to work on Counter-Strike. That's where the heart of esports lies and our, our heart of competitive uh, video games lies is having fun playing these games. I think there's, it's mentally draining and I think a lot of people are caught off guard by that and I think, uh, I would love to see my friends be put through the grinder. That'd be great. It's awesome. Uh, Jason, 
This is exactly where he needs to be. It actually makes uh, more sense. He's probably uh, the smartest between the two of us. Uh, he's great at speaking, he's great at entertaining, he's uh, more outgoing. Uh, being a shoutcaster fits him perfectly. Gen different generations are different. Our generation is baby boomers. We weren't raised that way. No. You were raised that way to get a job. And then you figure it out from there. No one ever talked about your passion. He's given up a lot in his life to make this dream come true. He's traveling, uh, I'd say, uh, three quarters of, uh, of the year. He's um, on the road, living out of hotels. He's kind of given up family type options, girlfriends. He's kind of put all that on, the, uh, on hold for now. I'm proud that he's taken the risk to go for it because it's not a safe path. We didn't take that kind of a risk. I think um, there was a point in the, at MLG Columbus where I think it was during the Team Liquid versus Luminosity game in the semifinals where I was the only one to vote for, for or to, to predict Team Liquid to win, and the crowd was chanting Moses. Tuesday. This is why we do this. This is why we do it. Wait a minute. I think she uh, she really liked that part. Uh, not so much the GG motherfuckers to the entire arena. Sooner or later, sometimes parents have to turn on the lights too and realize that you know we may not be right just because we're parents, mm -hmm. and you get to see your children doing things that they love. Oh, I just look so disorganized for the amount of confidence. I mean, you hear that yell. I mean, immortals just know how close they are and they know that this is so dominant. And this is where you really have to see, like, backs against the wall. That's a sick flush, but blind. Phelps still gets one and he just pushes forward. They can't find him and they're gonna try and spam the smoke. Oh, that's oh another kill. God. Penny as well with one and he's gonna close it out for immortals. It's just nothing left in a one on five. By the way, Life of Moses, there's a documentary. Are people following you around for a documentary? You yeah, they're, they're, a I, don't, I don't know if it's like a, it's, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. It's, uh, might be a porn.